Saturdays have been pretty good for Tennessee the last couple of weeks in terms of recruiting another commit jumping in the boat for the class of 2025 while Tennessee is well on its way to a top 10 class. That and a whole lot more to Monday Locked on Balls. You are Locked on Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome into it. Happy Monday morning, and I uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in here to Locked On Balls. I'm Eric Kane. We're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every single day, and thanks so much for making Locked On Balls your first listen, your first watch each and every single day. Got a fun show coming up today, but first, couldn't do it without our friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook, where they make every moment more. Check it all out over at FanDuel.com. Christian Gass has committed to the University of Tennessee, longtime Priority target, long time, um, uh, just assumed, soon to be commitment for Tennessee. It became official on Saturday. We'll get into that. What Tennessee's getting out of a linebacker and Christian Gass coming up in a matter of moments. Uh, Tennessee picked to finish seventh in the Southeastern Conference in 2024 from SEC Media Days. That news came out on Friday. We'll go over which teams were ranked ahead of Tennessee. Is that fair or foul? Seventh overall, is that fair or foul? And uh, what are the overall projections for Tennessee in 2024? That's coming up in segment two. And then two vaults, James Pierce, Cooper Mays, named to the All-SEC team. That's coming up in segment number three. Should there have been more? All that and more right here on a Monday show. You can watch us, listen to us, subscribe to us, download us, all that for free, wherever you get your podcasts. And, of course, Lockdown Balls on the YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, hadn't uh, subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Tell your friends. Uh, camp starting in a little over a week, so tell your friends. All about Locked On Vols, and we'll continue to grow this show and get it where it needs to be. All right, Christian Gass. So, Christian Gass, longtime priority target for the University of Tennessee. He officially jumps in the boat for Tennessee on Saturday. And, and you know, guys, Saturday's been really, really fruitful for Tennessee um, here lately. You've got uh, Marion Dye that I believe was Saturday a couple of, um, let's see here. I believe that was on Saturday a couple of weeks ago. I might have to, to double check on that. But I know Travis Smith obviously was last Saturday. Um, oh, 28th was a Friday. So, uh, nonetheless, the last two Saturdays, Tennessee football has picked up a commit. Travis Smith, Christian Gass. Who is Christian Gass? Well, Christian Gass is a four-star linebacker for now the University of Tennessee in, in that committed 2025 class. If you look at the on-three industry rankings, four-star he is a top 225 player in the country. This is the industry rankings. 25th at linebacker, 30th for the state of Georgia. And we know how fruitful the state of Georgia is in Texas and Florida and California and Louisiana. Those are big time recruiting states for football at the power four level. Um, if you look at on three's individual rankings, a lot of people want to hate on on three and that's fair. And I, one of my buddies was calling me the company man the other day because I was defending on three. It just says what it is. I mean, we can, we can, you know, be frustrated with the re-rankings and how George McIntyre dropped 50 spots. That's, that's completely fair. But how many times are we sitting here looking at a Tennessee commit and on three has this prospect ranked well on the above the other three publications. It just feels like that's more common uh, than not. And here's another case like this right now. Christian Gass, according to On3, a four-star rated prospect, 85th prospect in the country, according to On3. Uh, 247 does not have him in the top 200, 300, whatever that is. Um, ESPN has him ranked as the 124th overall prospect in the class, and Rivals.com does not have him ranked uh, in the top you know, 250 or whatever. So on three is out on a limb here for Christian Gass at this point in time, uh, saying that he is a top 100 prospect. He's a top 85 prospect and one of the better players from the state of Georgia. That's what on three views or kind of sees in Christian Gass. He is six foot two and a half, about 220 pounds. He is from East Side. That's where he attends high school in Covington, Georgia. And uh, again, he's been a long time target for the University of Tennessee. You go over and look at VolQuest.com's impact analysis that Matt Ray put together, and you see what like we 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 like to do. And Charles uh, Charles Power, who is the um, director of recruiting and scouting for On Three, and this is what he had to say about Christian Gas. Quote: Christian Gas is one of the most physically gifted linebackers in the 2025 cycle. He has plus traits. He measures in around six foot two, two and a half. 215 on the weight. He has elite arms that measure in a shade under 34 inches, and he can really run to the, uh, run 
at that size. He clocked in at 11.3 in the 100 meters as a junior. That's track and field. You can really see that show up on film. He can run sideline to sideline, um, and he can rush the passer. We see him do a variety of things that show off his versatility in his junior film. I think Christian Gass is a very high upside. He is certainly not a finished product. Which I think is exi- uh, with it, which I think is exciting. If you're a Tennessee fan, I think it is uh, he is a guy who is going to continue to get better and better. He has shown continued improvement through his junior season. I think it's a combination of uh, play speed, range, physicality, versatility, and ability to rush the passer that presents a strong foundation for what he's going to bring to the table as a linebacker prospect. He had 68 tackles, 11 TFLs as a junior. I expect those numbers to go up. Charles Power continues on. From a pure traits perspective, there is so much to like about him as a linebacker prospect. It is easy to see why he is so coveted and high on the board for programs that recruit nationally. Again, the Tennessee beat out Georgia in this battle. Uh, To that end, I think he's a huge gift for Tennessee, a guy who can certainly um, has the athletic DNA at the position. Linebacker will be viewed as an increasingly athletic position. Traits of that position really matter, especially when you're looking up at the top NFL draft picks. I think Christian Gass checks all those boxes, and we look for at that position. I'm excited to see what he does as a senior, but there is no doubt he has a ton of physical talent and is a big pickup for Tennessee as they continue to add blue-chip prospects on the defensive side of the ball, which I think they've done a good job under Josh Heupel. And quote, a lot of good things there about Christian Gass for Tennessee. Tennessee bit out Georgia in this one. Georgia was the home state school. Also, he's got some versatility to his game. He is listed as a linebacker, but he can also come off the edge and rush a little bit. So is he, he's very, you know, undefined. He's very raw, as as Charles Power was saying, as he gets in a collegiate strength conditioning program and develops, and you see kind of what he looks like maybe in a year or not. If he continues to get a little bit bigger and he's got that explosiveness, maybe they push him to the edge. Maybe they push him to give Jordan Ross and, and Caleb Herring some help once Joshua Josephs and, and of course, James Pierce this year, you know, leave that edge position. Maybe, maybe he's another, um, maybe he's another guy that can help with that position on the edge. You know, look, look, look looking ahead in a couple of years. But they're looking at him as if he is a linebacker. And boy, that linebacker spot, man, it has gotten so much better under Josh Hopper. Remember when Josh Hopper got here and Brian John Marie was hired as linebackers coach? He had Jeremy Banks, who was a converted running back at the time and just coming off a of suspension. You had Solon Page. You had Aaron Beasley. And this is before Aaron Beasley really came into who he was. You played three linebackers. You had Juwan uh, Mitchell, Juju uh, Mitchell there, uh, you know, transferring over from, I think at the time was Texas, but he was very much in and out of the lineup. Then he had a season-ending injury his first year here with Tennessee. That first year in 2021, man, you, you played three linebackers, and it was tough. Now look at what you've got in the cupboard right now. Of course, you've got... Keenan Peely, you've got Aaron Carter, you got Jeremiah T. Lander, you've got Evan Spillman, you're adding in guys like, you know, Christian Gass and, and Jordan Burns and Jalen Smith and, and some of these other guys that are already in the committed class. So uh, this linebacker position's really gotten better and better since Josh Hopple, of course, has been here, head coach of Tennessee, and um, it's adding to the future here as I just jam my finger on my desk. <laughs> it's adding to the future here in Christian Gass um, with the commitment to Tennessee um, over. Uh, the weekend this coming up on Saturday. So Tennessee now sits 12th. If you look at the uh, national rankings over at on three, Tennessee volunteers, football industry comparison commits 12th in the nation, sixth in the sec. Tennessee now has 18 commits for the class of 2025. Tennessee's doing a really, really nice job because you look at some of the other guys that are set to be coming off the board here in the next couple of weeks, five-star offensive tackle, David Sanders. We know about this one. Uh, Tennessee's been on this one for quite some time. I believe that's August the 18th. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks. You know, that's probably the top target that's still on the board. Christian Gass jumps in the boat on Saturday. Uh, Shady Hayward is going to be making a, making a commitment announcements, I believe this upcoming weekend. And man, Tennessee's been in the driver's seat for that one for months. For months, Tennessee's been in the driver's seat for that one. That is for sure. Um, Onus Cannon Banny, um, the cornerback, highly rated four-star cornerback. Tennessee's been one of several schools that have been kind of in the driver's seat there. And you know, Tennessee's probably the program to beat, but also LSU, North Carolina, Utah are in that conversation as well. So he's another guy to be looking out for. A couple flip candidates. You just talked about Christian Gass being a linebacker. Jaden Perlotti, who's a very much a flip candidate to Tennessee from Georgia, hasn't happened yet. But Tennessee's very much the team to beat in terms of it, it, it feels like he's not going to be in Georgia's class. 
and Tennessee is a very Tennessee is the team that is sitting in the driver's seat to flip Jaden Perlavi um, at, at linebacker. Deshaun Brame tied in to pair with Jack Van Dorsalier. Committed to Oregon a little while ago, but a couple of weeks ago, but he loves Tennessee, and, and that one feels like it has all the momentum to the Big Orange. It truly does. Other guys that are still on the board that Tennessee's trying for, but you know we'll see what happens. Is Josh Petty, Juan Gaston. Um, let's see here. A c- couple running backs as well. So my point in all this is, Tennessee just continues to pick up value and value and value. And yes, Tennessee's sitting at 12th in the nation right now, but you get a couple of those guys in that I just mentioned. Tennessee's without a doubt a top 10 class, but Tennessee, more importantly, will be jumping in the top five in terms of the SEC rankings where Tennessee's at six right now. So um, yeah, you know, good, good, uh, good haul for Tennessee. This class is shaping up to be a really, really talented class for the University of Tennessee. And uh, Josh Hopel continues to make recruiting a priority here as head coach of the Volunteers. Hey, when we come back, Tennessee's picked to finish seventh in the Southeastern Conference. Is that fair? Is that foul? We'll discuss all that and more coming up next. We continue on here with a Monday edition of Lockdown Ball. Stay tuned. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer and fewer games, and the sports, they're not sporting like I want them to. But over at FanDuel, lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app, dream up bets anytime I am in the mood. And this summer only, FanDuel is hooking up all customers, not just new customers, not just existing customers, but all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. So head on over to FanDuel.com, start making the most of your summer. Did you know America, or excuse me, did you know that FanDuel is America's number one sports? But think about all the other sports books that are out there. Can they say they're America's number one sports book? No, but FanDuel can. And this, this summer only, again, all customers, a boost or a bonus daily Every single day. That's why. That's one of the many reasons why FanDuel is America's number one sports book. It's also the, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. It's where you can go to make every moment more. FanDuel. FanDuel.com for more. FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Go check it out. Hey, welcome back into your Monday edition of Lockdown Balls. I am Eric Kane. Appreciate you guys for being here, as always, making Lockdown Balls your first listen each and every day. Don't forget, tomorrow's show is a Twitter Tuesday show, an X Tuesday. So get in those questions, get in those comments, get in those concerns. Do my best to answer those on Tuesday's episode of Lockdown Balls. Media Day is coming up on Tuesday. and the uh, Excuse me, I'm a week early. Um, a week from Tuesday, it'll be Media Day. And a week from Wednesday, it'll be the start of... Tennessee fall camp. Um, So that's really, really exciting. We are getting ever so close. If you guys have a question about Tennessee football, baseball, basketball, recruiting, whatever the case is, if you guys have a question for me, um, somebody asked me a question last week about um, something uh, about my playing career. And I I made note of it, but I forgot to get to it. But maybe I'll answer that on tomorrow's show because uh, it's it's funny how I was going to answer it. Anyway, get in those questions at underscore Kane or at Lockdown Balls. All right. So. Wrapping up the SEC Media Days in Dallas, Texas last week, the media voted on um, the predicted order of finish. The media voted on the preseason all-SEC teams. First team, second team, and third team. Um, I have did not vote this year because I did not get a link to vote. Um, somebody asked me on the general's quarters, do media have to be present at the event to vote and that answer is no but you need to be on the sec media days email chain if you know what i'm saying so like since i didn't go and cover the event this year i was not on the email chain they got all the transcripts and videos and all that sent to me and the passwords go on the on the portal and all that like if i were they would have been sending emails saying hey at this link please vote the sec predicted order of finish by thursday evening or you know the all sec teams by four o'clock on thursday afternoon you know what i'm saying so I didn't get all that, so technically you can go for a day, leave, but if you're on that chain, you can vote. Um, I didn't vote, but the fact of the matter is the media did vote on this. And there are so many things that I can't stand about how the media votes every single year. We'll get into that, but the biggest thing is that we're going to start out by talking about is Tennessee has voted seventh in the SEC this year. Now, remember, you might hear that at uh, at first and say, seventh? No way Tennessee's going to finish dead last in the SEC East this year. Well, remember, there are no divisions. So there's no one through seven on one side, one through seven on the other. It is one through 16. The addition, the uh, the, uh, implementation of of Oklahoma and Texas. Okay. And um, yeah, I couldn't say that word there. (laughs) Um, 
it's one through sixteen now. So Tennessee is penciled in there at number seven. That is just over the halfway point. I Means Tennessee's very much a top half of the SEC team, which duh. Um, but it's a little bit more, in my opinion, closer to the middle than it is where it should be towards the top. I'm, I'm a little bit intrigued there. Georgia, resounding number one team pick to finish in the SEC this year, expected. Um, it got, of the possible, like, 216 votes, it got 165 of the votes, okay? Um, Georgia was picked to finish first in the conference. Texas was picked to finish second in the conference, and it was a college football playoff team last year, and it returns a really, really good quarterback, and it returns a lot of pieces. It does lose a running back, but it returns a lot of pieces. You say, okay, well, that makes sense. Texas, first year in the SEC, it's going to try to come in with an exclamation point, and that, that makes a whole lot of sense. So I can see why Texas would be number two. Alabama is going to be number three, and everybody who thinks Alabama is just going to drop off a cliff year one without Nick Saban, you're you're very much mistaken, in my opinion. We can save this clip and pull it back in November, and I can be completely wrong, and I'll I'll be okay with being completely wrong, guys. That's fine. I just, I mean, all he does is win. And granted, he's never, this being Kellen DeBoer, he's never coached in the SEC, and it's going to be a wake-up call for sure. Don't get me wrong. But to this point, all the dude has done is won, okay? He's coached like 100 and however many games. He's like 116 and 12 all time in his career, like the last four years or something. It's insane. Um, so anybody who thinks Alabama is just going to fall off a cliff year one, you're mistaken. Plus, remember, yeah, they had players leave that roster. They had they added to that roster, but it's still a Nick Saban roster. I think Alabama's going to be okay. I'm not saying Alabama's going to be in the college football playoff, but they're going to be right there in the top 12 teams in the country for sure. It's going to be one of the top three or four teams in the SEC for sure, in my opinion. That does not mean that they're going to beat Tennessee. I think Tennessee can certainly win that game at home. Alabama's at number three. Ole Miss is at number four. <sighs> Might be a just a hair too high. But Ole Miss is number four. LSU, this is the biggest laughing stock in my opinion. LSU at number five? LSU at number five. Last year, you had a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. You had a first round wide receiver. You have two NFL tackles. Last year, you had, you had an offense for the ages. But your defense couldn't stop water at a dam. I mean, it's incredibly bad how bad that defense was. And sure, you have Harold Perkins, who I think is one of the best defensive players in the country. But it takes more than one to tango, right? And so where, what about that defense will give you faith that that LSU can hold teams under 30 or 35 points a game routinely? Also, you lost your first-round wide receiver. You lost your Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. You bring in Garrett Nussmeyer, not bring in, elevate. He's been there for a couple years, and I think that he's going to do fine because he's been a part of the system. He knows everything about it, but LSU's lost a lot. Why is LSU voted to be number five in this conference? I have no clue. Makes no sense to me. I think LSU, you should slide Missouri up, Tennessee up, Oklahoma up. I think LSU should be behind Oklahoma, in my opinion. That's just my. That's just that's just how I'm viewing it. Um, LSU also got two first place votes, which just really goes to show you how strong the Baton Rouge media contingent was down there in Dallas, Texas. Missouri checks in at number six. Okay, I'm not going to fight that too much because Missouri's the darling of the off season. It makes some sense. Tennessee's at seven. Oklahoma is at eight. Okay. Um, Texas A&M is at number nine. Auburn's at ten. Kentucky's at eleven. Florida's at twelve. South Carolina is thirteenth. Arkansas is 14th, Mississippi State is 15th, and Vanderbilt is 16th. You had 165 first-place votes for Georgia, who finished in first. Texas had 27 first-place votes, who finished in second. Alabama, 12 first-place votes, who finished in third. Okay, all those are fine. Ole Miss, four first-place votes. Okay, there are a lot of fanboys in the media that cover Ole Miss, so okay. Um, that is number four. LSU gets two first-place votes. I just mentioned that. South Carolina got one first-place vote because it just goes to show you how stupid we are as media and people make fun of us because, you know, that right there just clearly shows that we don't take our job seriously, right? And then Vanderbilt, of course, always Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's always going to get a couple of picks uh, being uh, being a team that finished 16th in the preseason, pretty good order of finish, but picked up two first-place votes because that makes so much sense because certain media members just think it'll be funny to do that. 
um, it, it's annoying and it's embarrassing for people in my field. And that's just, that's just my opinion. So that is a predicted order of finish. I am fine. Kind of overall where Tennessee is. I think there are eight teams that'll be in the conversation for the college football playoffs this year. I think only four to five teams will make it four teams. I feel pretty confident in saying we'll make the, the, the four team college football playoff. I think Tennessee, I think the sec can make up a third of that field. I do. And that would be four teams. Um, I, I do not agree with LSU being picked to finish ahead of Tennessee and ahead of Missouri for that matter. I think Ole Miss might be a little bit too high. If I was voting this, I'd go Georgia, Texas, Alabama. Honestly, I'd probably go Missouri, Ole Miss, Tennessee. So I have Tennessee at sixth. Then I would have Oklahoma, LSU. Then I have Texas A&M. And then after that, I mean, these teams, who cares? I mean, it, really from three all the way down to nine, you can go in a number of different orders, just depending on who you ask, to be completely honest with you. Um, it's not that I think Missouri is it's just, you know, so, so, so great. But, like, think about think about Tennessee coming off its banner year. Here's the difference. Tennessee was had a whole lot of, whole, whole lot of hot hype all last season, and that's fair, and that's great. Tennessee still returned a lot of playmaking ability, but Tennessee lost – Hendon Hooker. Tennessee lost Jalen Hyatt. Tennessee lost Cedric Tillman. Sure, Cedric Tillman was, you know, battered and bruised all that 2022 season, but NFL receiver, Belitnikoff Award winner, Jalen Hyatt. Should have been a Heisman Trophy finalist, Hendon Hooker. Byron Young, who went on to have a great rookie season for the LA Rams. You lost a lot from your banner year in 2022. LSU, or excuse me, Missouri, sure, you've lost some players that contributed in a big way. Cody Schrader, huge, huge presence in that offense. How is Brady Cook going to function without the stability and durability of a Cody Schrader who got the ball about 45 times a game last year? I, I don't know. But you do bring back Brady Cook, and you do bring back Luther Burton, and it takes more than two to tango. I recognize that, but you have more coming back to work with this year after a banner year than that of Tennessee 2022 to 2023. So I get why people are so high on Missouri. I mean, I understand. I'm not saying that Missouri is going to be all world this year. Um, Eli Drinkwitz, got to give credit where credit's due. He did a good job last year. I'm still not the biggest fan of him. We'll see what Missouri does this year. But all this preseason talk, it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter at all. But I think Tennessee should be right in there at 5-6 range, in my opinion. Not at 7. It deserves to be a little bit higher than that. Um, I think Ole Miss is too high. I think LSU is very much too high. Um, and I think media members who vote anybody other than Georgia, Texas, Alabama to win the SEC uh, should should turn in their credentials and, and not vote anymore because, well, they don't take their job seriously. So that is my opinion. Uh, again, this is all talking season. The season will be here in about a month, about six weeks, about five and a half weeks and Five weeks and some change. Uh, we've got start of fall camp a week from Wednesday, media day a week from Tuesday, and no better place to follow everything Tennessee football related than right here at Locked on Vols. Okay, don't forget, get in your questions for Twitter Tuesday. That is coming up on tomorrow's show. Um, two, te- two Tennessee volunteers named to the all-SEC preseason team. Who are they? I'll give you two guesses. You'll get them in your first two guesses. But also, should have there been, should have there been more? We'll discuss as we continue on here with the Monday edition of Lockdown Ball. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back into your Monday edition of Lockdown Vols. I am Eric Kane. Appreciate you guys for making this a priority here to uh, begin your week. Got a big week coming up. Tons of Tennessee football conversation to get into. We're going to continue to um, look at the positions and kind of what Tennessee has to work with beginning fall camp, all that and more. We'll start looking at some uh, opponents, scouting the opponents. We'll start that series here in a couple of days as well. And um, man, I-, I love this time of year. There's no better time than this time right here every year. It's when football is beginning to start. So two Tennessee volunteers named to the preseason all SEC team. I will give you two seconds to throw out the two names that if you haven't seen it yet, or if you live on a rock, I'll give you two seconds to guess the two names for Tennessee's all SEC team starting now. One, two, Scooper Mays and James Pierce. Of course, who else would it be? They've been named first team all Americans by Walter camp and, and feel still this off season. They've been named all region teams and preseason all, you know, all conference from this publication and that publication. Well, the media voted both James Pierce 
and Cooper Mays preseason first team all SEC selections. So that's awesome. Um, you know, no no surprises there. Um, that that was about that, that that is what was expected. Also, sidebar real quick before we continue to get on in this. If you look at the SEC release and you look at the preseason all SEC selections, and I know you've probably seen this on X, but if not, they they put initials essentially abbreviations for all the teams like Georgia's UGA, Missouri's MIZ, LSU's LSU, Texas is TEX. Um, well, that brings me to the one I'm saying here. Texas's abbreviation was T E X. Tennessee's was U T. So the SEC is throwing its weight around in the whole who's the real UT and saying that it's University of Tennessee. Well, that is a safe and easy pick. Why? Well, because not only has Tennessee been in the SEC longer than the brand new edition of Texas, it was a founding member of the Southeastern Conference. The Southeastern Conference was founded in Knoxville, Tennessee. And oh yeah, the University of Tennessee has been a institution longer than Texas has been a state. So anyway, I will never not have the opportunity to throw shade at the uh, Longhorns, the you know, people who think that they're the real UT, horns down. Um, am I going to get a 15-yard penalty right now? I don't know, but horns down. Um, yeah, I just, uh, the conversation is just so bogus. So the SEC doing the right thing, and just having some fun here, That this literally doesn't matter, but the SEC doing the right thing and giving Tennessee the UT abbreviation. I thought that was cool. But nonetheless, Cooper Mays and, and James Pierce, first team, all SEC selections, but that was it for the University of Tennessee. There were no other volunteer that were named to the second team or that were named to the third team. And I got to be honest with you, back when I voted on this stuff, and I went to SEC Media Days every single year, by the time you get to the all-conference preseason third team, you're just looking for names that you know a lot of the times because it's so silly. Phil still does four teams. It's so silly to vote on anything more than two teams, in my opinion, because, yeah, quarterback, you're top heavy. Um, wide receiver, you're top heavy. Defensive line, you're pretty top heavy. But a lot of these guys, you don't know who all these safeties and cornerbacks are around the league. Once you get to the third team, you're looking for names that you know at the very minimum. There's only a few positions where you truly need a third team to give somebody some recognition is what I'm trying to say. It's too many teams. But even that, even with that, nobody from Tennessee was named on the All-SEC preseason third team. Uh, you look at the first team, and it's Carson Beck, a quarterback. You know, no shocker there. Trevor Etienne, who transferred over from Florida, he's now at Georgia. Him and Jack West Hunter from Auburn get the nod at running back. Luther Burden, Trey Harris of Missouri and Mizzou. Um, you know, I, I get that. You look at the rest of the offensive line around Cooper Mays, Tyler Booker, Will Campbell of LSU, Kelvin Banks, one of the best offensive linemen from the state of Texas, and Tate Ratledge from Georgia. Um, yeah. Yeah, those all those all make some sense. So that's a pretty pretty nifty offensive line. You look at the second team offense. Quinn Ewers, uh, new quarterback from Texas, into the SEC. Of course, he's a really really good player. We've known him for a while. Uh, running back Raheem Sanders, Rocket Sanders, going from uh, what you call Arkansas to South Carolina for this year. And then there's a tie on the second team, so they gave it to him both. C.J. Baxter of Texas and Montreal Johnson Jr. of Florida. Isaiah Bond, Kieran Lacey, LSU and Texas. You've got um, Emory Jones, who's the other NFL tackle for, for LSU. He's on the second team. Parker Brailsford of uh, Alabama is the center. Caden Proctor, Xavier Truss, and Dylan Fairchild is the rest of the offensive line. Look at the third team. Quarterback is Jalen Milrow. Running back is Justin Haynes. Uh, other running back is Ulysses Bentley. Okay, Deion Burks, Dominic Lovett are your wide receivers. Oscar Delp, who I think Oscar Delp should probably be the first team tied in, um, but he's the third team tied in of Georgia. Um, he's there the, uh, on the third team offense. And yeah, I mean, that's the you know, offensive lineman. I don't really even know a lot of these names. My point is where is a Dylan Sampson? Where is a Javante Spragans? Where is a John Campbell? <laughs> you know, I, I understand not having a Brew McCoy up there or, you know, not having, a, obviously, a Nico up there or a Lance Hurd because Lance Hurd is brand new and didn't start last year. But where are some proven established guys like a Javante Spragans, a John Campbell? Um, where are they? 
I, 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 I'm, I'm a little confused on why Tennessee doesn't have more representation on the offensive side specifically. Look at the defensive side. There's James Pierce at the top, defensive end, Walter Nolan, Deion Walker, and Stackhouse from Georgia. That is a really, really good defensive line. Harold Perkins, Danny Strutzman are your linebackers. Um, Deontay Lawson and Mikael Williams are also your linebackers. Malachi Starks, Malachi Moore. Billy Bowman and Maxwell Harrison are your defensive backs. That is your first team defense. Your second team defensive positions that kind of matter in my opinion. Like I think that maybe an Amari Thomas, maybe an Omar Norman Lott should be on the defensive line. But you know Nick Scorton from from Purdue. Now he's at Texas A&M. He's on the second team defensive line alongside Tim Smith, Jared Ivey, Landon Jackson, Shamar Turner. Those are all names that I recognize. Okay, um, third team defensive line. Tim Keenan, the princely guy that was at Florida, now he's at now he's at Ole Miss. Trey Moore, Hemingway of South Carolina. I, there's Maury Thomas should be on there, in my opinion. Um, nobody else on Tennessee's defense really deserves to be a preseason All SEC selection, so it would just really stay with the defensive line. So if you're not seeing Amari Thomas, if you're not seeing like stats wise, obviously uh, Omar Norman Lott, five and a half sacks from the interior of the defensive line, I think he deserved to be on there. But nobody voted those guys on there. So, you know, nobody was going to vote a Jackson Ross or a brand new kicker, Max Gilbert or Josh Turbeville. Uh, Boo Carter is going to be your new return man, but obviously he's a true freshman, hadn't played. So, you know, he's not on there. Matthew Solansky probably should have got a nod as a long snapper, in my opinion, but um, not a whole lot of representation for Tennessee overall, offensively and defensively. And, and that's okay. Again, this is preseason. Nobody gives a crap. These awards literally mean nothing. But the two guys that you assume were going to be on there, Cooper Mays and James Pierce, they were taken care of. They were named first-team All-SEC preseason accolades. But other guys that you thought might get some recognition in Amari Thomas and Omar Norman Lott, um, a Keenan, not a Keenan Peely, but a uh, Dylan Sampson, uh, John Campbell, a Javante Spragans, <laughs> nowhere to be found. And I'm not really sure why. Uh, I guess you can always speak to the volume and the strength of the Southeastern Conference this year because it's going to be a really, really good year this year. Um, it is going to be a solid, solid year this year, that is for sure. All right. Fun-filled Monday show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I love doing this. I love uh, start of the new week because there's always a whole lot to talk about. We'll continue to break down everything Tennessee football related, getting you ready for fall camp. Tuesday's show is the mailbag show, so you everydayers put in your questions for your you know comments, concerns, all that good stuff, at underscore Kaner, at Locked on Vols. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already on YouTube, please do so. Tell your friend about this show as well. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever, go ahead and subscribe to the show. Make sure you're subscribed there so it'll download every time you open the app. And uh, we'll continue to bring some uh, some good Tennessee information each and every day. Guys, thank you so much. Could not do this without you. This is Lockdown Vaults.